Good morning, guys. Uh, today is Thursday, April 23rd. Um, this is the first video back since I last saw you guys, which was, um, well, last time I saw you would be Monday or Tuesday for our Zoom call, and then last time I recorded a video would be before break. So welcome back. Um, hope you guys are having a good day. Um, it's about 8.30 in the morning, and it's very, very stormy outside, so everybody needs to stay safe today. I think we're under tornado watch until 1 o'clock p.m., so be careful. Make sure you don't have any cars parked under big branches, um, but otherwise enjoy the rain. It sounds really nice. So um, today, if you want to pause me after just this last thing I say to go get your notes, you should, because today we will be taking just a little bit of notes on parables. So go grab your notebook if you need it, um, and then we'll pick back up once you're back. Okay, so we'll start off with just a quick prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, please hear all of our intentions, both the ones we hold silently in the secret of our heart, those that we have posted on our prayer intention board, and of course, for all those suffering, um, sick, infirmed in the hospital, um, for all of our families, especially our grandparents, people who are at high risk um, for the virus, please be with those people, especially those who are lonely because they're forced into isolation. Um, please be with all of us as we struggle to continue to be fruitful in our time away from our normal schedules. And um, yes, just help us to lift up all of our intentions to you, um, both those big and small, as we say, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, well without end, amen. Okay, um, so also don't forget, we still have our prayer intention board for April up for another couple days. Feel free, keep posting those prayer intentions there. We'll keep reading those and being with you in our prayers, even in our own homes. Um, and so let's get right into it. All right, so today we're going to talk about parables. You do need your notes. Um, and the reason I have this picture pulled up right here um, will become clear in just a moment. These are the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're icons of them. Um, and we're going to talk about the gospel writers a little bit today when it comes to parables. All right, so I'm going to go over to our notes. All right, and I think... Uh, I've disappeared from your screen, but that's okay. All right, so let's get started. So today we're talking about parables. This is something I think you already know a good bit about, even if you don't know that you know about it. Um, one of the major parables we've already studied, and we've just finished studying, is the Chronicles of Narnia, and especially the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe that we spent quite some time reading. Um, that is one big parable, and one of the greatest parable writers, as we've mentioned in class, is C.S. Lewis. Um, C.S. Lewis is wonderful at writing parables because he's able to tell really entertaining stories that have deeper spiritual meaning, and that's really what a parable is meant to do. So it's a short pictorial story. Um, obviously, Narnia is a longer parable. Um, it's got maybe many parables inside of it even, but it's a short pictorial story designed to impart a lesson or truth in a memorable way, okay? Um, and the reason we're talking about this in theology is because this is oftentimes the way that, Je that, the way that Jesus teaches to choose, um, I'm sorry, teaches, chooses to, whoa, the way that Jesus chooses to teach us in the scripture. Okay, sorry about that. So it's the way Jesus teaches. And the reason I think, um, or one of the reasons that this is such an important way um, or tool that we have for teaching is because uh, human beings love stories. We really learn well when um, we can we can hear a story and then there's meaning infused in the story rather than just being told a series of unrelated facts or you're, that we're going to need to do this or that we should do that. It usually sits better with us when we can learn it through a story because we think of our lives as stories. We think of, you know, everyone's lives as kind of a narrative. Um, we read stories, you know, for fun. We watch shows that are basically stories. Um, we understand history best when it's told as a story. And so parables often are the best way for us as human beings to glean a deeper meaning rather than just being told the meaning flat out. Um, and so I can't play this video right this second because then YouTube won't restrict my video. But what I did do is the same video I just uh, skipped by. I've already posted it to your links on our class page and it's called The Zacks by Dr. Seuss. I want you to watch that video before you do your assignment for today because Dr. Seuss is another one of those um, great parable tellers and he often you know he writes parables that are meant for children but the, the point of the parables is to impart 
um, a real truth and a real lesson into the lives of little kids. And they're still, um, honestly, really entertaining for us as well, because those meanings don't kind of expire. They're things that we learn in our lives, and we keep learning them kind of forever in deeper and deeper ways. All right, and so let's get to the Gospels. So there is a word that you need to learn right now. It's that S word, the synoptic Gospels. Um, the word synoptic basically in Greek just means similar. Okay, so this, the similar Gospels. And the reason we're talking about the similar Gospels, the synoptic Gospels, is because they all have one major thing in common. The major thing in common is that Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those are the synoptic Gospels, are grouped together because they have similar outlines and similar stories. Basically what we mean by that is that they're full of parables. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the synoptic gospels, are full of parables. So if you're gonna read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you'll notice that the way that Jesus is often imparting his message for the world, for his apostles, for his followers, are through these little tiny stories. And you can probably think of a lot of them, and you might not have known they're called parables, but something like, um, you know, the story of um, the seeds that are scattered on, you know, different kinds of ground. So, you know, some seeds are scattered on ground that's really hard and the seed doesn't really grow. And then some seeds are scattered on, um, you know, ground that has thorny branches. And so the, the fruit gets choked out and it doesn't survive. There are all these different um, kinds of, you know, parables that have the intention of teaching us some spiritual lesson. But the thing, the thing is that John is not a synoptic gospel and he does not have any parables at all. The Gospel of John contains zero parables from start to finish. That's why we don't call him a synoptic gospel. He's not as similar to the other three gospel writers. Okay, so um, John, compared to the synoptics, is really kind of has a different focus. His focus is more about adding beauty and adding depth to the truth of who Christ is. And something that John often does is um, really emphasize that Jesus is purely divine, completely divine, completely God. Um, as we know, Jesus is obviously completely God and completely man, um, but John has less of an emphasis on Jesus's humanity, more of an emphasis on Jesus's divinity, and how um, how incredible of a truth that really is. And so he speaks more in a, um, a poetic way. Um, reading the Gospel of John could almost be like reading poetry, uh, because there's a lot of depth you have to really spend a lot of time kind of chewing on what it is that John is saying. Um, but the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are a little bit more straightforward, and they use a lot more parables. They use short stories to um, convey a meaning. Another kind of corporation that is a master at parable telling is Disney, right? You could probably think of a million different Disney movies, and they're all parables. They're supposed to teach children important lessons. Um, you know, you could think of I don't know, let's just think of like Finding Nemo. You know, even though there's a lot of things you could learn from Finding Nemo, one of the very first lessons that kids are intended to learn is don't wander away from your parents and don't go do things they tell you not to do. Why? Because you're going to go do that and then you might get um, injured or in trouble and then you'll need your parents and you won't be able to find them. There's all of these, you know, deep meanings that they see Finding Nemo. They see Nemo, you know, get away from his dad and then this really bad thing happened because of it. And it teaches little kids that it's probably not a good idea to not do what your parents say. So anyway, parables can be all kinds of things, all kinds of stories that convey deeper meaning. But Jesus was truly the master of parables. Um, so what I want you to do tonight is, let me come back. So I want you to, um, on your BlackBot account, you'll go to links, I think, and you'll see that there's a link um, that leads you to the Dr. Seuss video that I was talking about, about the Zacks one that goes north and one that goes south. And you'll watch that. It's like three minutes and it's it's funny. You probably remember it from your childhood if you were a big Dr. Seuss family, but um, you're gonna watch that three minute video. Um, and then after you've watched the Dr. Seuss video, I want you to um, go to your assignments. Let's see if I can just show you right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so under links, here it is. So under links, you'll see the Zacks by Dr. Seuss, 423, that's today. Watch the video, and then under assignments, um, you're going to tell me what you think um, the meaning of this parable is and then how it applies to your life. So let me show you where that assignment is. You'll go to assignments. You'll click on this assignment right here. Here you have it. Watch the video. 
And then in three sentences minimum, tell me what you think the truth is. What's the meaning of the parable that Dr. Seuss is trying to convey? And in one complete sentence, tell me at least one. Tell me how you think you could apply this message to your own life. Like what would Dr. Seuss be saying to you personally? All right. Um, it's a very simple little assignment. Not long at all. Um, it's due tomorrow at four o'clock. And um, I think that's it. I'll be importing your grades from your Narnia assessment. Hopefully that went well um, today. And so you'll see your grades pretty soon. And then um, this will be due tomorrow. And I'll see you again on Tuesday for our Zoom call. Um, don't forget you need to be out of bed and fully dressed. I think all of you guys were. But that's the only way I'm going to count you as present for our next Zoom call. So just keep that in mind. And I'll see you then. Good luck. Um, stay safe today with the weather. And uh, I'll see you on Tuesday.